In this video, I will be demonstrating how to create a program that will display a multiplication table. Let us open a new file in CodeBlocks. Whenever we open a new file, since CodeBlocks can be used in creating different programs of different languages, while writing your code, you will not have color coding, unlike if it is already saved. Let us first save our file as multiplicationtable.c to let CodeBlocks know that we are creating a C program. That's the time the color of the code will change. Now let us make a comment about what this program is all about. This is a program that will display a multiplication table. A 5 by 5 multiplication table. This is a single line comment. I will be changing it to a multi line comment since I'll add more. The multiplication table will look like this. We have for the column, we will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then for the rows, we also have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now to display the value to be placed in this location, you should be aware of what column and row that location is. The location where the cursor is, is row 2. So this is row 1, this is row 2, column 2. So you have to multiply those. 2 times 2 is 4. Then take, for example, this, this location. The row here is row 1, row 2, row 3, row 3, column 4. Therefore, 3 times 4 is 12. The location of the cell within a table will be our guide on how to put the values and complete our table. So this is row 2, column 3, row 2, column 4, row 2, column 5. This is row 3, column 2, row 3, column 3, row 3, column 5, row 4, column 2, row 4, column 3, row 4, column 4, row 4, column 5. Then finally, row 5, column 2, row 5, column 3, row 5, column 4, and row 5, column 5. So this would be our sample output. Based on the sample output, there are actions that we will be doing repeatedly. That is to multiply the rows by its column. We can use an iterative statement or what we call looping statement. The iterative or looping statements can be used for us to avoid typing the same code over and over again. Among the three options that we have, the for loop, the do while loop, and the while loop, we have to consider we have to consider our condition. And in this program, we already know in advance how many times we will repeat a certain instruction or a code. That is because we will have a 5 by 5 multiplication table. So among these three iteration statements, the predefined kind of loop is the for loop. And in our condition, we will be dealing with integers, wherein if we will use character or string, it is best to use the do while or the while loop. So let us remove this too. And aside from that, we will be using a nested for loop. That is, there is a for loop inside another for loop. That is because the first for loop is intended for our row and the second for loop is intended for our column. Let me explain to you how we go about using the nested for loop. So the first for loop is intended for the row we assign row with a value of 1, that is for the first for loop. And then the column will be assigned with the following values, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That is our second for loop. Now, while row is less than or equal to 5, since we will have 5 rows, that is true, it goes to the next for loop. 
which is intended for our column. Then you will multiply row and column. While column is 1, you will multiply row by column, which is 1. Then while column is less than or equal to 5, it will increment to 2. Then you multiply 1 times 2 is 2. Then you increment it to 3. 1 times 3 is 3. You increment it to 4. Condition is still true. So 1 times 4 is 4. Increment it again. 1 times 5 is 5. If this becomes 6, the condition now is false. Therefore, it exits the second for loop and goes to the first for loop wherein this will now be incremented to 2. Then we take note that we should have a new line for this to go to the next row, which is row 2. Then we do the same steps again. 2 is to be multiplied with column. So we have 2. Then increment the column. 4. Increment the column. 3. Increment the column. 4. Increment the column. 5. And then if the column is equal to 6, the condition is false. You exit the second for loop and go back again to the first for loop and increment that until the condition becomes false. We will repeat this until row becomes 5 because if row is now 6, this is false already. So that is how the compiler will execute the program. Let me delete this part. Let us start our main function. Take note that all C programs have a main function. And inside the main function is where we put all of our codes. So we will have here the for loop. We have the initialization. We initialize our counter, which is R for row, set to 1. So we have to declare that in R for row. Then while row is less than or equal to 5, we will increment it by 1. From 1 plus 1 plus 1. So we will increment our row by 1. Then inside our for loop is the second for loop intended for our column. We have C to be initialized to 1 because that would be our first value. Same with our row. We now declare the variable C and our condition would be while column or C is less than or equal to 5 since we will be creating a 5 by 5 multiplication table. We will increment our variable C by 1 since this is the sequence of our column and now we will print an integer is white's percent d because it's a digit we place a space then the percent d will have the value of row times column so take for example what is r what is row 1 is 1 less than or equal to 5 yes so you go to the block of code enclosed within this parenthesis so we go here now c is 1 is 1 less than or equal to 5? Yes. So we print this. What should we be printing here? 1 times 1 is 1. Then we'll have a space. Then goes here in our increment wherein C becomes 2. But R is still 1. So you have to multiply 1 times 2 and print it again. Then you have a space. Then you go back to increment. It becomes 3. Still true. You print it again. Then you increment C, becomes 4. Is it true? Yes. So you multiply it again with R, then print. Then increment, condition, print. Increment, condition, if true, print. Increment, condition, if false, you exit this part, then R becomes 2. And if our condition is true, it goes here again, wherein C initialized to 1 again, and then repeat. But this time, R has a value of but C will start again with 1. But take note that upon finishing the first row, there should be a new line. So we will be using the escape sequence N. So let us try. So there we have a multiplication table, but the display is not properly indented. So instead of a space, we make use of a tab. So there. And also, we could write at the beginning, we could say that this is a multiplication table. A 5 by 5 multiplication table. There. Then after this, we could type here, 
press any key to exit then we will be having a get ch waiting for a character before exiting the program there press any key to exit then it is simply easy to change this to 10 if we would like to have a 10 by 10 we could simply change the value of our condition so there we have a 10 by 10 multiplication table and it's easy to change we could also have a 7 by 5 for example 7 by 5 there so we have seven rows and five columns we could also customize our program by asking first the user what row or column he or she prefers so enter row accept the entry using the scanf function and store it to variable row and we'll also have one for the column we ask again the user to enter number of columns enter number of rows enter number of columns then we accept the entry and store it to variable column which is now declared take note that percent symbol is used for the format specifier while the ampersand is used for the address of our variables and this time since we already accepted the rows and the columns preferred by our user instead of making a fixed value we could change this to row and this to column now this becomes simply a multiplication table so we have here enter number of rows four enter number of columns eight so we have this multiplication table. Let's have a 10 by 10. We could also center this multiplication table if you want or just simply put it at the left side by eliminating the tabs because we do not know how many columns or rows the user may enter. So that ends this video presentation. Thank you for watching.